So when we've used sine, cosine, and tangent in previous problems, we've been solving for one of our three sides. Now we're going to solve for an angle. And to do that, we're going to use our inverse trig functions, and they reverse the process of above. Instead, we're going to have the ratio of sides, so we're going to know two sides, and we're going to solve for an angle measure. You still need to know your Sokotoa. This is still going to be very important. Well, let's look at an example. If AC is 15 and CB is 20, we want to solve for theta. In this case, AC is the opposite side and BC is the hypotenuse. There we go. Since we're working with opposite and hypotenuse, that's going to be sine. We get sine of theta equals 15 over 20, which reduces to 3 fourths. To solve for theta, so to move sine to the other side, we take what's called the sine inverse. And on your calculator, that's going to be sine to the negative 1 button. So theta is going to be sine inverse of 3 fourths. So if you go to your calculators, hit the second or the shift button, find your sine button, hit that, and that should actually bring up sine inverse. And then you can type in 3 fourths. We find that theta is 48.59 degrees. A couple things to notice real quick. While your calculators use sine inverse like this, Another common way is to write it as arc sine. And those are the two ways to express the inverse sine function. Sine to the negative 1 and arc sine. Do also, though, make a very special note. Sine inverse of some number is not the same as saying 1 over sine of that number. The negative 1 exponent does not mean it goes into the denominator. It means we're taking the inverse sign. Alright, let's try another example. Maybe this will help clear up any still lingering misconceptions. In this next one, you are told that AB is 3, CB is 9, and we're again we're solving for theta. If you feel like you can do this on your own, go ahead and do so now, pause the video, and resume when you're ready to see the solution. For this example, we're working with the adjacent and the hypotenuse, and that gives us cosine. We know cosine of theta equals 3 over 9, which is 1 third. Cosine theta equals 1 third. Since we're solving for an angle measure, we're going to have to use the inverse function. We say theta equals cosine inverse of one third. We can plug this into our calculators. And you should get that theta is 70.53 degrees. All right, one more example we're going to look at. AB is 32, and AC is 47. Again, take a moment, solve it on your own first, pause the video, and resume when you're ready to see your solution. In this situation, we're working with the adjacent and the opposite sides, meaning we're using tangent. So tan of theta equals opposite over adjacent, that's 47 over 32. Since we're solving for the angle measure, we're going to use inverse. So theta equals tan inverse of 47 over 32. Use your calculators, and we should find that that value is about 55.75 degrees. That's it.